Phnom Penh is Cambodia's vibrant, beating heart. This huge metropolis, stretched out over the Tonle Sap and Mekong rivers, is a city of large, central boulevards and small back lanes, where new and ancient culture meet. There are a lot of locations in the country, but for those interested in Cambodia's 20th century history, Phnom Penh is definitely a must-see since it is home to two of the country's most depressing locations. Travelers planning to see Cambodia's most popular monument, Angkor Wat, can profit greatly from a stay in the capital, which houses the excellent National Museum of Angkor. In this video, let's discover the top places to visit in Phnom Penh. Royal Palace The beautiful Royal Palace which has been the home and residence of Cambodia's royal family since the 1860s, is Phnom Penh's showcase. The spired roof pavilions of the complex are a magnificent example of cultural Khmer architecture. In addition, both the throne hall area and the silver pagoda, which are set among manicured gardens, are open to the public. The throne hall was built in 1917 to replace a previous wooden structure. The Emerald Buddha statue, as well as a gigantic 90-kilogram gold Buddha statue, encrusted with hundreds of jewels, are both housed in the Silver Pagoda. The Silver Pagoda escaped the Khmer Rouge regime's wrath and hereafter retains several spectacular items. The inner ceiling artwork depicts the Rimka, a Cambodian epic based on the Indian Ramayana. Shoyang Ek the Shoyong Ek killing fields are a somber reminder of the Khmer Rouge's tyranny, whose harsh government ruled Cambodia from 1975 to early 1979 with the objective of transforming the country into a socialist agrarian society. During Pol Pot's dictatorial dictatorship, it is believed that between one and three million Cambodians were slaughtered in less than four years. Many Cambodians died as a result of famine and disease, but hundreds of thousands were slain, including intellectuals, educated folks such as doctors and teachers, state critics, and even anyone suspected of being an opponent. Riverboat Cruises Phnom Penh is a riverine city, and cruising down the river is one of the most serene ways to take in the sights. There are daily sunset cruise tourist boat departures from the riverbank between 5pm and 7.30pm, which head down to the Tonle Sap and Mekong rivers. Or you can charter a private boat close by to go out on the water at any time of day. If you wish to book a private boat, wear your bargaining cap. This is an excellent chance to spend an hour off from the hectic motorbike clogged streets and immerse yourself in the gentler rhythm of native river life. Watunalom. Watunalom is Cambodia's most important temple complex and the Buddhist headquarters of the country. A brow hair from the Buddha is housed in a stupa within the complex. The Wat was founded in 1443, and it is currently growing again after significant devastation during the Khmer Rouge era, where many of its structures and religious icons were destroyed. After being blasted to bits by the Khmer Rouge, a beautiful Buddha figure on the third floor of the main structure has been reconstructed, and it has a statue on the second floor commemorating Huat Hat, who was slain by Pol Pot. To Old Slang Museum Some of the regime's worst torture atrocities were committed here, in the Khmer Rouge's security prison, S21. Between 1975 and 1978, almost 17,000 people were accused of sabotaging the revolution in some form and passed through these gates. The majority of the detainees here were once members of the Khmer Rouge who were turned against the regime during one of the regime's numerous internal purges. The photographic evidence plastered on the walls of the cramped cells next to vacant beds adds to the visceral quality of the encounter. Comrade Douche oversaw S21 and ensured that detailed documents were kept. The extensive documentation and photos survived the prison's rapid closure during the Vietnamese invasion of Phnom Penh in 1979. Cambodia National Museum The National Museum is kept in a traditional Khmer structure built around the year 1920. 
the beautiful collection of old Khmer craftsmanship within, which contains over 1,800 pieces, is also a must-see to anyone intrigued in Cambodian history. Among the highlights of the museum galleries are the Vishnu head excavated just next to the vast temple complex of Angkor Wat, the incredible Angkorian collection, which includes monuments from the temples of Khor Ker and Angkor Thom, as well as the large display of pre-Angkorian artifacts that trace Cambodia's Funan and Chenla periods. Wat Phnom Phnom Penh is a city with a flat terrain. The only height in the area is the 27-meter-high mound that contains Wat Phnom's temple. The initial religious construction on this location is said to have been built in the 14th century, and it has subsequently been rebuilt multiple times, with the current main temple sanctuary dating from 1926. Wat Phnom is the only hill in Phnom Penh. According to history, the first pagoda on this location was built in 1373, to house four Buddha images washed up on the shores of the Mekong and discovered by a lady named Pen. It is one of the city's major Buddhist temples, and visitors routinely leave donations and pray at the various shrines that surround the main sanctuary. Many individuals come here these days to pray for good luck and success in school or in business. When a petitioner's wish is fulfilled, he or she returns to make the gift promised when the request was made, such as a garland of jasmine flowers or bananas, which the spirits are believed to enjoy. South May Built in 1937 in the Art Deco style, the iconic domed edifice that houses the major South May market dominates Phnom Penh's downtown city. With the market's large assortment of local products on show and plenty of noise and bustle, this is a fantastic place to get a taste of local life. From fresh fruits and vegetables to jewelry and clothing, everything is sold here, and the market is bustling from early morning until early evening. It's a terrific spot to walk aimlessly, and photographers will find plenty of vivid sights to snap. The center hall is cool and breezy even on hot days because of the design's optimal ventilation. The market was recently restored with the help of the French government and is in good condition. The greatest market for shopping is certainly South May. However, locals have a tendency for overcharging on most things. Independence Monument The Freedom Monument, right in the middle of Sihanouk and Moradon Boulevards, was erected in 1953 to mark Cambodia's independence from French colonial rule. The Angkorian temple is composed of sandstone and lavishly decorated with nagas. The monument is now a memorial to Cambodia's war dead as well as a symbol of the country's freedom. A short distance away is the Cambodia-Vietnam Friendship Monument, which was completed in 1979 after Vietnamese forces toppled the Khmer Rouge. The Independence Monument is the focal point of national ceremonies. On these occasions, a monarch or senior official frequently lights a ceremonial flame on the inside pedestal and flower tributes line the stairwell. Foreign visitors and locals alike visit the Independence Monument every year. Russian Market The active and lively Russian market in Phnom Penh hums with local activity and provides some fantastic shopping opportunities. From flashy trinkets to highly produced indigenous wooden handicrafts and Cambodian silks, as well as a plethora of sellers selling dirt cheap clothing, you'll find everything here. Because the temperature inside the market surges in the middle of the day, this is not the place to go shopping in the middle of the day, so arrive early. The market is open for business at 6 a.m. This is also an excellent opportunity to put on your bargaining hat and hone your bargaining skills. The market's original name is Sartuel Tompong, but that name was given to it because of the huge number of Russian foreign residents of Phnom Penh who used to shop there. Overall, Phnom Penh is well known for its historic monuments and tourist destinations. A big infrastructure dedicated to visitors makes it easily accessible, and yet many believe it to be one of the nicest cities in Asia since Cambodians have not yet grown through mass tourism. Wrought by French influence that displays the finest and classic French architecture in Asia, 
Phnom Penh has also been known as the Paris of the East. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.